Okay. So everyone, we are live on YouTube and CBC and Rogers can roll. And we're just about to get started. Okay. So thank you for joining us today, everyone. Again, uh, this is our media briefing for Friday, April 3rd. Today's briefing will be pretty fast because um, we have a provincial announcement coming up at noon that a lot of this of us on this call would like to join. So just a note to media to please keep your questions short today. Uh, we will have statements from Acting Medical o Officer of Health, Dr. Shuli Wong, followed by Regional Chair Karen Redman, and finally by CAO Mike Murray. As always, we will listen to uh, the statements, and then I will take media questions afterwards. So please just keep yourself muted until it's your turn to speak. And with that, I will pass it on to Shuli. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, so because we have numbers now on our dashboard, I won't be going over them one by one. Uh, but I'd like to talk about a few, a few things in particular. Um, so um, the uh, situation with respect to long-term care homes. So uh, apologies, um, the website is actually still being updated. I know, um, you know, our, our, our um, uh, we updated it at 10:30, uh, but the uh, the long-term care information is uh, should be in the process of complete completing its update. Uh, I'm sorry, the the updates for the long-term care should be completed very soon. So you'll see that. So I have the latest though, uh, verbally. So I'll just let you know. Um, so um, we have um, Highview Residences, which is an outbreak where we have um, uh, three residents which have uh, who, who have tossed, tested positive. Uh, we have one at Sunnyside Home where two staff members have tested positive. Uh, we have uh, one at Forest Heights Rivera where one resident has tested positive, one at St. Luke's Place, where one staff member has tested positive, one at the Village at University Gates, where one staff member has tested positive, one at Chartwell Westmount, where one staff person has tested positive. So that, that, those are our latest numbers and apologies. They're either updated right now or they will be in five to 10 minutes. Um, so we have, um, we have seen, um, a significant and rapid increase in cases at long-term care homes and retirement homes in other parts of the, of the, of the province. And as you can see now, we're also tracking uh, long-term care homes under outbreak in our region. Uh, and uh, we've started to have those as well. Um, so we, given what we've seen elsewhere in the province, we should expect to see the numbers of homes under outbreak and the number of cases rise here locally as well. So our homes in Waterloo Region are working hard and taking steps to prevent or slow the spread of COVID as much as they can. Uh, that said, we need to uh, remain vigilant and um, monitor the situation closely. Um, now I'd like to talk about uh, the overall status of, of cases in Waterloo Region. So, so far, the speed of increase of cases in Waterloo Region has been manageable for our healthcare system. That is the primary goal. And that will continue to be our goal. Um, that is to do all that we can as a community so that our health system can cope. Um, as we are seeing that cases continue to rise across Ontario, um, we should expect that we will continue also to have new cases in Waterloo Region for some time. So we should expect to see more cases, more hospitalizations, more patients who will need care in ICU and sadly more deaths. Um, I'd just like to say that we are still in the early phases of this pandemic. That doesn't mean that the efforts we've made as a community to date haven't had an impact. I believe it has, and it has prevented many cases, hospitalizations and deaths that we would have otherwise seen. 
but I don't believe that new cases will subside anytime soon. I believe we still have a long road to travel in the fight against COVID-19. We don't know exactly how long that road will be, but we do know that every time each of us does what we can, we will continue to positively impact the outcome. So as a reminder, that's why I'd like to continue to ask our community to please only leave your home when you feel that you need to. And when you do leave your home, to please practice physical distancing. I know it's very difficult because we don't have an idea of an end date that we can look forward to. And it's also difficult because things are changing quickly and there's lots of new information that we get, new recommendations and restrictions that we have to get used to. So I know it's not hard and I really appreciate the efforts that our community is making. Every time someone is staying home as much as they can and helping others stay home as much as they can if others need help with essential errands, they are helping us to fight this pandemic. It helps our loved ones, our neighbors, and our community overall. So once again, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's doing everything they can to help keep Waterloo Region strong. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Okay, with that, we'll pass it over to Chair Redmond. Go ahead, Karen. Good morning. I would like to take a moment to thank our public works employees here at the region and all the municipalities who are working around the clock behind the scenes to ensure quality transportation and environmental services. This includes water and wastewater operators on duty 24 seven monitoring and keeping our quality water system running. Public transit operators providing critical service like getting our essential health professionals to work and citizens to doctor's appointments. Waste services continuing curbside collection and road, roads employees keeping our traffic lights working. You've heard about this before that the cases are still on the rise and I wanna reinforce our medical officer of health's message that we need to remain vigilant about controlling the spread of COVID-19. Your hard work at staying uh, at home, practicing physical distancing, self-isolation, working from home, avoiding gatherings and practicing good personal hygiene is having an impact. But COVID-19 is not gonna take the weekend off and it will be very tempting to go out and enjoy the good weather. So it's very important that we continue to practice the directives of public health. Thank you to everyone who is making sure that our community is safe for all of us by practicing these directives. Thank you, Chair Redmond. So our last statement will be from CAO Mike Murray. Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> Thanks, Bethany. Um, the update I wanted to provide today um, is related to some changes to transit service. And I think our media partners would have got a, a media release earlier this morning um, announcing some pretty significant transit changes. So um, effective immediately, GRT service will be free until May 31st, 2020. We're also in the process of um, making changes to transit service frequency um, as a result of some challenges to provide adequate staffing and significant reductions in ridership. So we will be making changes to the frequency of service on a number of routes and those service changes will go into effect starting April the 20th. There'll be lots more communication over the next week with our customers about what those specific changes are. Uh, it amounts to about a 25% reduction in transit service. We're trying to keep the same overall um, duration of service during the day. So the same start and end time in the day, but basically just reducing frequency during the day on some routes, recognizing that ridership is down significantly. Um, and um, we have two customer service locations that have been open to the public. Um, th with the changes we're making now, those two customer service locations will also close to the public 
effective April the 10th. Related to the free service, um, customers who have, who have purchased an April monthly pass, that monthly pass will automatically roll over to the next month when fare collection resumes. So currently that's anticipated to be June. So all of the monthly pass holders who are comfortable with their pass rolling over to June, uh, they don't need to do anything. Other pass holders um, who may have other circumstances, um, they can call uh, the region's customer service line if they want to explore other options around um, refunds. Uh, so that's the primary update about transit and the significant transit service changes. So I think we're all happy to take questions, Bethany. Great, thanks, Mike. All right, I'm gonna turn it to Joanna from the record first. If you can unmute yourself, go ahead, Joanna. Thank you. Uh, just had a few questions. Um, with the province planning to release um, new modeling today, I'm wondering, will there be uh, similar regional information that's released? Yes, we're very interested in the um, results of the provincial modeling. And uh, once we get um, that information ourselves, uh, we will be looking into that and uh, working on um, uh, regional modeling as well. But we'll need that information from the province first. Okay, so any timeline on that? Oh, uh, we will do it as quickly as we can, but uh, I, I uh, suspect that it will take a few days. Okay. You can follow up on that, Joanna? Uh, a different question? Sure. Uh, just uh, regarding the consumption and treatment services site, how is that operating now given social distancing and things like yeah, that? It's still operating um, and it's operating with, uh, you know, the appropriate infection prevention and control measures that we would recommend for, uh, for a health service like that. And so they're taking all the appropriate precautions. Um, yeah, but it's still, uh, it's still operating. Okay. And Sorry, can I ask a question for a colleague as well? Sure. Okay. Um, he was wondering if you're suggesting that families should start um, talking with uh, seniors about advanced care planning, mm. like whether they want uh, CPR or to be put on a respirator. No, I, think, I think it's always a good conversation to try to have uh, with, uh, with family. I know it's not an easy conversation, and, and a lot of us don't necessarily, you know, it's not the, the, the top of mind for us. Uh, uh, but I, I think that's a good idea. And then people should, um, just in general, they should um, start to make preparations uh, that would be good at any time. Um, but certainly, you know, um, I think it's a good idea. Okay. That's, that's it, thank you. Thanks, Joanna. I'm going to pass it over to Nicole from CTV. Go ahead, Nicole. Oh, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, I just unmuted myself. And um, first question is, um, we've seen signs at the Westmount Plaza suggesting there will be an assessment center set up there. Um, is this the case? And if so, when will it be operational? Yeah, we'll, we'll have more information about that next Monday. Uh, so uh, you'll, you'll get information about that next Monday. Okay, and will we see also, I guess, region-wide, different locations? Uh, no, we'll, we, no, there are already um, um, a few locations and we'll give an update on, on all locations on, on, on Monday. Okay, um, and there are no new resolved cases reported today. Is this concerning and is the number of resolved cases any indication of progress or lack thereof? I, I can hear the first part of your question, Nicole. Could you repeat that? Yeah, there were no new resolved cases reported today. Is this oh. concerning? No, no, it's just, it, it's, it's something you have to look at, not at a, on a day-to-day -day basis, but over, you know, over, over days and weeks. It's not, I wouldn't consider that concerning. Okay, any additional questions, Nicole? 
Um, a quick one um, in Guelph, um, I guess this is for Mike Murray. In Guelph, we uh, have heard of 600 uh, temporary and part-time municipal workers um, temporarily off. Um, do you expect there will be layoffs for Waterloo Regional staff? Yeah, Nicole, it's a really good question. And so it is one of the things that we're actively working through. So with, you know, just in the last couple of days announcing the extension of closures and, you know, service changes, we're now turning our mind to what are the impacts of that on regional services and on regional employees. And, you know, we're working through trying to find the right balance between uh, treating our employees fairly, compassionately, empathetically, because they're going through a challenging time and yet doing that in a way that's, um, you know, kind of financially responsible and responsible to regional taxpayers. So that's the balance that we're trying to find and we'll be, you know, working through, um, working with our unions and working with our employees to find that right balance. Do you have a timeline that we can expect? That work is underway as we speak. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Nicole. So I have uh, Kevin Nielsen up next. I don't see you, Kevin, but can you chime in? Sure, um, one question. Uh, I guess about seven and a half percent of the infect in pieces in Waterloo Region involve the uh, retirement homes or the um, long-term care homes. Uh, is that a result of there being more testing there or is there a reasoning for it being such yes, a high absolutely. number? Absolutely, so we are going to see a, um, more and more cases in long-term care homes, whether it be staff cases or resident cases, as well as cases hospitalized or who are in need of ICU or cases among healthcare workers, precisely because those are the groups that are now being prioritized for testing. Um, so absolutely, it's a function of that. Um, that's why we'll see more severe cases and more cases in long-term care homes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, I have a, a question sent in via chat from Jackie at CBC. Okay. Um, so this might be a shared answer, but her question is, uh, does the frequency of bus routes uh, prolong the period or the reduction in frequency, prolong the period that people are out of their homes and which might go against public health direction? Yeah, so maybe I'll comment on that. Um, so, so as I said, what we're working on doing is um, changing the frequency of some routes, especially routes that are very, uh, that, you know, are, are much less used um, right now. So um, I don't think it necessarily uh, will contribute to people being out of their houses longer. Um, we will be publishing a new schedule. And so people can schedule their um, their outings, their trips on transit appropriately, you know, so leave the house, you know, however long you need to walk to the bus stop. And the fact that the bus is coming every 30 minutes instead of every 15 minutes, um, I think people will be able to plan their trips, um, plan their trips accordingly. Uh, yeah, so I think we, we don't, we're not concerned about um, impact on people being out longer. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, Jackie has uh, two additional questions. So one looks like for Shuli, at what point do we tell people they can't go for walks around the neighborhood and just tell them to stay on their property except for perhaps getting groceries? Well, we're not at the point where um, we are asking or requiring everyone to not go out um, because um, we've, with, with the recommendations and the, and the requirements that have been put in place to date, we've seen a, a very significant effect in terms of actually, you know, very few people being out. Um, so uh, we have really achieved uh, by and large what we wanted to achieve right now. Um, and we have to be careful about putting in such strict measures if they're not currently warranted such that you would create worse negative impacts, um, you know. So I think, you know, it's always a bit of a um, fine balance, yeah, but we always have to um, monitor and 
you know, decide if needed to, 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 to modify some things. But at this point, at this point, what we're telling people is as much as you can, and this will be different for everyone, as much as you can, please do not go out unless you feel that you have to, either for essential purposes uh, or to help others uh, meet their essential needs, like neighbors or fam family or friends. Uh, and um, if everyone does that, I think we're gonna, I, I think we have seen and we'll continue to see very good effects from that. All right, thanks, Julie. Okay, we have one final question uh, that has been sent in via chat from Jackie again. Uh, does public health know how many days worth of masks and PPE um, the region has in supply for healthcare workers in hospitals and beyond? And in addition, are there any drug shortages or shortages of other supplies? So that would be a question that would best be answered uh, by the hospitals themselves. Um, obviously, you know, uh, we do not have an unlimited supply and uh, it's important to conserve uh, supplies when, uh, uh, when and where appropriate. Um, so that's a question that uh, the hospitals will be able to um, we better be able to answer. And okay, great. If, if, oh. you know, if, I could, if I could just add on that, um, you know, I think everybody knows um, personal protective equipment and the supplies of personal protective equipment, that is an issue for, uh, for the whole community, for every organization that's engaged in any um, element of the whole healthcare spectrum, you know, paramedics, long-term care homes, uh, primary care, acute care, um, and what I would say is there's great collaborative work going on in the community to try to um, make sure we understand what PPE is needed and make sure wherever there's um, stocks of PPE that are available, that they're getting allocated to the highest priority people. Um, the region has um, people, our, you know, our procurement people working with other community partners, uh, Communitac, the hospitals. Um, so how can we do procurement uh, in the most efficient, effective, and coordinated way. So I just think, you know, I just want to let the whole community know there's a lot of really good collaborative work going on um, to try to uh, source personal protective equipment. Thanks, Mike. Okay, last call for any final questions or people that I may have missed. I don't see anyone here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, wrap this up then. Thanks again to our media partners who keep coming back to help share these really important messages under challenging circumstances. We will do this again on Monday. Thanks everyone.